Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today I'm going to walk you through some really simple ways to fine tune the Ender 3 V3 SE printer. Um, I had some pretty major problems with my SE when I first built it. And I'm going to show you this right here. This was the very first test print I did after bed leveling. This uh, tower test to determine uh, retraction settings. And this was with one millimeter of retraction, which is around the recommended amount. Uh, if you look online, most people usually use between 0 0.08 millimeter and 1.5 millimeter to get really good retraction results. I used one kind of close to the middle there just as a starting point. So this should look really, really good with that setting. Uh, this is Hatchbox PLA, fresh PLA, and it looks terrible. I mean, this was abysmal. Um, I played around with this for two days. Could not get this printer to print any better than this. I tore it completely apart, took the gantry apart, took the hot end, disassembled the extruder, inspected everything. Everything was immaculate. This printer was put together extremely well at the factory, except for a loose print bed, but I tightened that up when uh, um, I was building it, and I show that in my build video. But there's nothing mechanically wrong with this printer. So I was really getting frustrated with this. I was almost to the point of just shipping it back. I just had had it. But then it occurred to me to start checking the firmware. If there's nothing mechanical, it has to be software related. So long story short, I went in and compared this to uh, the my Ender 3 uh, V2 settings, the acceleration and speed. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing. This max acceleration for this machine is set to 4 thousand for xyz and extruder four thousand on an ender 3 v2 that is set to 500 for the x and y 100 for the z and a thousand for the extruder so this is many many times higher than what the v2 is and this is essentially a v2 in all mechanical terms, except for the direct drive extrusion and the linear rail or not linear rails but it's got steel rails for the uh, y-axis. So when I looked at this, here's how firmware should work. These settings are the maximum. They put a ceiling on what the printer will do. So if let's say this is set to 4000 for acceleration. If in my Cura I have it set to 500, It'll just print at 500 acceleration because this setting in the firmware is the maximum. It's a ceiling. Um, it should, the, the Cura, that setting will override this as long as it's lower than this. 500 versus 4,000, it should print at 500. It wasn't. For some reason, and I cannot understand this, the firmware on this machine is overriding the settings in Cura and it's trying to have 4,000 uh, millimeters per second uh, acceleration. So just as a test, I dialed it down to 500, 500 for X and Y, 100 for Z, 1,000 uh, for extruder. And while I was at it, I went ahead and changed the speeds and dropped those down to what my V2 is like. And that was 300, 310, and 50, like you're seeing here. And when I did all that, put these back to Ender 3 V2 specs, that exact same G code file, no changes, now prints immaculately. This is gorgeous. Um, I got a tiny bit of stringing on it simply because the Z offset that it automatically determined is a little low and I was getting some nozzle drag. So I need to go in and manually adjust that up. But I didn't want to do that for this test. I wanted everything to be you know, above board without me tweaking it, except for these numbers. So I did it with its own auto leveling, its own auto Z offset, and then um, just these numerical, bleh, sorry, I can't talk today. Numerical values changed in the firmware, and that's all it took to go from this to this. Now, I'm going to reach out to Creality. I'm going to research this more. 
I'm going to see what's going on and I will try to do a follow-up video and then keep testing these settings, see how high we can get the acceleration before there's a print issue, uh, see how high we can get the speeds. But for right now, if you are experiencing uh, poor print quality on your V3 SE, this is a safe fix. Put these new numbers in and it will print correctly for you. I'm going to walk you through this real quick, how to change these and save the settings. Um, first thing you do is go to your LCD and go to control, then motion, then we'll do max speed first. Then for max speed, uh, input 300 for X, 300 for Y, 10 for Z, and 50 for E, and you could even uh, bump E up to 60 if you want. Then you're going to go back to the previous menu, go to max acceleration. And for these, I want you to put in uh, 500 for both X and Y acceleration, 100 for Z, and 1000 for extruder. Then go back to the pre previous menu and you're going to go down and click on store configuration that will save these settings so the next time you power off and on uh, the printer will retain this information so get this done then i have one more thing i want to show you that you should do to increase the quality on your printer now um once you get this set up in cura and cura does not have a selection under the printer options for the Ender 3 V3 SE, just pick the Ender 3 V2. The settings are the same, so just pick that. Then, under the printer menu, you're going to want to go in and make a change to the starting G code. And I'm just going to clip in a section of video from my Ender 3 V2 assembly video next, and this will walk you through the uh, process. What's happening is you're going to want to turn off power loss resume because that does cause print artifacts on the outer skins of your models. So I'm going to cut that in right now. Watch that. Um, by the way, guys, if you would, please click the like and subscribe buttons and maybe even leave a comment. It really helps me with the YouTube algorithms. Um, they tend not to promote a lot of smaller channels like this and you're um, liking this and subscribing really does do a lot to boost it. So if you like me doing all these videos to help you out, please consider helping me in return and just doing those two click, simple clicks to um, boost me in that YouTube algorithm. So anyways, here's the uh, clip on how to adjust and turn off your power loss resume. Creality did something that I just can't fathom why, but they took away the ability to turn off power loss resume in the, or power loss recovery in the LCD menu that the Ender 3 V2 has and a bunch of other Enders and CR10s have. They've always given you the option of turning this feature off. And I always recommend turning it off because um, one, it doesn't work that great. When you lose power, your heated bed loses uh, its adhesion on the print and the print slips loose and then power loss recovery doesn't work. Um, it also leaves a pretty good layer gap where it begins printing again. It's usually off by a layer. And so it just never looks right. It also, um, on a print, when you aren't, when you don't lose power, it produces surface artifacts because what it does, how this works, is every single layer, after completing the layer, the printer will pause for a second and write to the SD card what layer it just completed. And that's how the machine knows if it loses power and starts back on where it left off and where to begin. So what's going on here is every single layer you have this pause. One, that adds print time. Two, you get this little blob of filament on the print surface. So it mars your model, um, the outer surface, because you have this pause every single layer. And it's just not worth it. I mean, the, the number of times you lose power, they're so infrequent, and filament's not that expensive. It's not worth it to me to have prints that have lower quality just 
to have the option for power loss recovery, which may or may not work in the first place. So up till this point, Creality has always offered you the option of turning that feature off. They have taken that option away with the Neo series. So there's no option in the LCD, LCD menu to turn off power loss recovery. So if you want it off, you have to do it in the G code. And this is very, very simple to do. When you set up Cura, you select the end Creality Ender 3 V2 as your base printer. This is a V2, even though it's a Neo, you still just select the V2. When you go into Cura, you can add this line of code very, very easily. You're going to go to the upper left menu where you have your printer selected and select your Ender 3 V2. And then you're going to click on Manage Printers. When that comes up, select your V2, click on Machine Settings. And when that comes up, on the left hand side, you're going to see a column that says Start G Code. The very first line will say Ender 3 Custom Start G Code. The second line you see will be G92 E0 Reset Extruder. In between those two lines, we are going to insert a new line of code. And that line of code is going to be M413 space S0. Now, if you want, so you know what that line of code is later on, put a semicolon in and then just type whatever you want after it. The semicolon just tells uh, the uh, printer to ignore what comes after it. And we're just going to type a quick notation in there. From I just typed power loss off. I know what that is. But you're going to make sure that's the second line of code. And then close that window out and that will save that. And then now, anytime you have that Ender 3 V2 selected and slice a model, that line of code will be at the beginning of the sliced G code, and it will turn power loss recovery off on your Ender 3 V2 Neo. Okay, that's it for this video. Um, as I said, I will reach out to Creality, see what's going on with this firmware, and report back to you all in a future video. Please click that like and subscribe button. Thank you.